So welcome everyone to the New Jersey City University's Educational Technology Department's webinar series. Today we're really very lucky. We have Justine Krowick. Did I pronounce it right? Fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> An instructional designer from the greater New York City area who is here today and she is also part of our doctoral program in educational technology leadership. Today she's going to help us to understand a little bit more about Rocketbook for our rem remote world. And um, hopefully we'll get some more insight into how to use it as a great resource and tool for us as we teach and learn online. So thank you, Justine, for being a part of this. Thank you for having me. I'm gonna mute and you go right off. Okay, um, so I am gonna share my screen. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and see if I can. Okay, does everybody see my screen okay so far? Looks good, you just have to hit present. All right. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so overall Rocketbook for a remote world. Um, first off, thank you everybody for being here. Um, the idea of Rocketbook um, in and of itself, I was actually presented with uh, by one of my cohort members, which is actually on the webinar now, Samantha, thank you for introducing me to the idea in the first place. Um, and so when I heard the, the idea of our um, kind of springtime webinars, the idea of Rocketbook really stood out to me because I think it's, it's something that can be used more so, especially with what is going on now in the world. And, you know, when we go back into the classroom uh, or even in the office space. So overall, I think um, the company itself has some great ideas. So as we're moving forward, I just have a few things that we're going to kind of take a look at. Um, to start us off, just a little bit of an introduction to the company itself, to kind of what they're about, so the goals that they have. Uh, some different products, which the majority of their products do come for a price, but they do also have different educator options, and they do also have free options. So those I left. Uh, for last because I know those are the best. Um, so those I left for last. So just kind of uh, as a general introduction here uh, within the picture, we have a few different things. Uh, their main kind of idea here at Rocketbook, they kind of started off with different types of notebooks. Um, and now they're actually starting to introduce some different other things. Uh, and then they also have some generic uh, backpacks, pens, things like that. So Basically, what I'm going to try to go through with you are some of the um, tech-wide gadgets with the notebooks and the newer things that they have uh, that we're not so much used to. And as I'm going through, if any of you have any questions pertaining to whatever I'm talking about, feel free to, uh, you know, jump out. So a general introduction to Rocketbook and what it actually is. So looking in at number one, looking in at the idea of it actually being innovative. So a lot of what I found from Rocketbook, I took directly from their website. <clears throat> and overall, they started out with, uh, with a few different statistics. So if you think of a regular notebook that we use um, in terms of how many sheets it has, so a standard one subject notebook will use about 100 sheets. Uh, and the average tree, now it wasn't specified what type of tree, um, but the average tree actually makes about 10,000 paper sheets according to their website. So a little graphic that they provided to kind of get your mind going at about how many notebooks are actually thrown out or let's say, for example, um, simply used. And once you use a notebook, you can't really use that notebook again. So that is one of the issues that, they, that they're trying to kind of target here. Uh, so a little bit of an idea and you can look at some of the some of the options here within their graphic, but eight college semesters for a regular four-year college. Um, looking in at a total of, now in terms of subjects, definitely depending on major, but let's say you have uh, five courses within one semester, that'll total out to a total of 40 notebooks that uh, a person is going through within a regular four-year college. So that's 40 notebooks uh, pretty much in the garbage if they don't use that. And then you have a, a variety of different ideas here. So looking in at, you know, depending what people are using notebooks for, the generic idea here is that a regular notebook with paper 
uh, first off gets rid of our trees and you know pretty much just goes into the garbage. So something that they're looking to do in Rocketbook is to create a notebook of the future and to pretty much do less damage to what we're already doing. So with that, something that they're trying to kind of move forward with is the idea of sustainability um, in terms of our environmental impact. So they're trying to exactly minimize that. So taking a look at a regular notebook, uh, and in the picture we have the core notebook, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. Uh, every part of the notebook is actually recyclable. So you have the little spiral, you have the cover, and then you actually have the paper. Uh, so all of that is recycl recyclable. So besides them actually making products that they try to be environmentally friendly, what they also try to do is actually partner up with different types of organizations. So this is one of the examples that I found um, for Earth Day. I believe this was last year. Uh, they started making Earth-themed notebooks and they um, kind of went into combination with One Tree Planted. So for every notebook that was bought with an Earth theme, they actually planted a tree. So that was a little bit of their sustainability idea as well. So that's a little bit about kind of what the company is about. Their goal in mind is they're pretty much trying to bridge the gap uh, between traditional versus digital note taking. So overall, <clears throat> throughout the past several years, what I have personally trying to be to do um, was to find something similar to this. So let's say just to give you an example um, of one versus the other. So to just throw up a picture here, <clears throat> we have a generic example of let's say DNA notes. You know, I tried to pick something a little more complicated that way. There could be a bunch of things on the screen. So looking in at these generic notes here, uh, you notice that we have a bunch of different things here. So we have some doodles, uh, we have some coloring, some descriptions, uh, and then you also have some little type of paragraph, uh, paragraph type notes. So overall, there is a lot going on within these notes, but let's say, for example, to the student, <clears throat> overall, uh, at the end of the day, this is, may make more sense to them because they took these notes and they have it kind of more at a visual type of sense. So in a traditional way, <clears throat> these are their paper notes. Now on the flip side, digital note taking from what I have personally found in the past and currently, um, I haven't really found something that has been has made a person able to actually write as much out as a regular notebook. So some things that I have found currently, uh, the ideas of digital notebooks, where commonly some things like these are made to uh, for students to either fill in information, <clears throat> kind of as it's being presented. Um, but if you notice, a lot of what students can actually only really write in are, is typed in information. So it's really difficult for that student to really do any types of doodles or you know, color coding they may be able to do, but it's, a lot of it really isn't as easy as a regular notebook. Okay, or on the flip side, um, something that is also present, um, and I know OneNote does this, and I know there are some other different types of tools that do this, <clears throat> they have a type of electronic notebook. Um, however, what I've found with this, the negatives with this is the fact that a lot of the time, these are either very complicated or what has to be used is some type of tablet or smart pen. And these usually tend to be a lot more expensive. So district wise, you know, depending where, where these students are, where, um, where the teachers are, this may not always be possible. So something that Rocketbook was trying to do is pretty much to bridge that little gap between those two. So they started to do it. So their first kind of idea um, started off with a Rocketbook One. Not much different than a regular notebook because it's still a one-time use notebook. So uh, if you do use it, um, you can't really reuse it. And the only difference between this notebook uh, and a regular notebook was that they started the idea <clears throat> of sharing information to the cloud. So this is a regular layout of the Rocketbook One. 
if you notice the setup of it, there's there are just a bunch of dots everywhere. But at the very bottom, you have a QR code scanner as well as a few different icons. So we have a total of seven icons. The icons themselves don't really mean anything. They're just simply there to have you differentiate between each one. <clears throat> However, the way that this works, um, once you have the notebook and the icons are within that themselves, Rocketbook actually created a free app that you can download either, you know, in the Play Store or in the Apple Store. Um, and you can link each of these icons to wherever you would want to send your material to. So let's say, for example, if I have made a page or two of notes and I want to send it either to my email uh, or to a specific drive folder for later, um, all that I have to do at the very bottom of the page, I can simply put an X on whichever icon I have set for that specific folder or, or for that specific email. And I scan it with my device and it sends automatically to that area. So the only really setup that you have to do uh, is on your device, you know, depending on whatever you're using. So the Rocketbook one, that was the generic idea. Now the price points that I have on each slide, this one starts off at $12. <clears throat> the price points at this point uh, are the ones that they have on the website. However, they do also have educator options, which, uh, which tend to be several dollars less. So we'll take a look at each one of those after. So this was our first idea. Uh, after that came the Rocketbook Wave. So this one was a little bit different. Uh, this one you do need a microwave for. So the Rocketbook Wave comes in some different sizes as do a lot of the, the notebooks that they have. Uh, they come in a type of letter size as well as an executive size. The way that this actually works is they use a specific type of pen, a friction pen, uh, which not only they sell, but Amazon also sells. So kind of depending on whatever you want to buy it. Um, and using that pen, the setup of the notebook is exactly the same. So you have the dots, you have the icons at the bottom. The only difference here is that, let's say, for example, I was taking no notes on this page and I scanned it over to my folder or my email or wherever I want to scan it to. If I want to erase what I wrote and I want to use that page again, I put that notebook into the microwave and it erases everything that's on there and I can reuse that, that page one more time. So I just think that's crazy. I think that's pretty cool. But that was their first kind of idea moving forward with the idea of the microwave. So this in comparison to the first notebook is a little more expensive. It's at 25 to $27, depending on, I guess, which size you want to take. Um, but this was their first kind of push forward in the idea of actually being a reusable notebook. So moving from there, uh, they actually started to move forward through the TV show Shark Tank. Uh, that was how they were funded. Um, and the next notebook that they came up with was the Rocketbook Everlast. And for this one, you don't actually need a microwave. So it's a lot better than, uh, than the previous. Uh, they kept the same idea of it being erasable and reusable. However, they took this idea and they actually altered this notebook. And I'll show you in a second which one uh, they kind of changed it to. So this one actually isn't on the website, um, but it's changed and I'll show you in a little bit. So the Rocketbook Fusion came after that. This, uh, this in my opinion, I think this is the best one. Um, I myself have bought the core, which after taking a look at each one, I kind of wish I bought the Fusion because it has so much more to it. Uh, this one is made for really a variety of things, the office, the classroom, or personal use. Uh, and the reason why I say that I kind of wish I bought this one is the fact that it comes with seven different templates within it. Uh, so we have a few different pages in here. You have a, cal a calendar template, which you can pretty much change up. Uh, we have some results, depending on whatever you would like to use. Uh, we have a project template. So I think this page would specifically be, uh, be pretty good for students overall if they have trouble keeping kind of hands on their own tasks, their own assignments, things like that. You have a due date. Uh, we have a weekly calendar here, so day by day. Um, also would be good for actual assignments. Uh, we have a lined paper. So if you notice the other notebooks, all of them were just simply dotted all around. 
none of them actually had straight lines. So this is the first one that actually has straight lines to it. Uh, you have the regular dots and then a uh, in ideas page. So those are the seven different types of templates. Um, and this is the only, no, only notebook that actually has all of those. So I think that's pretty positive. And the, the difference between the Fusion um, and the previous ones is the fact that you can simply wipe this one clean with a damp cloth. And this is actually the cloth that they give you when you buy from, uh, from them. Uh, and the, the entire page comes clean. So no need for a microwave. You simply dampen, dampen that cloth and then you can use that page once again. Uh, so this one, more expensive than the previous ones, we have about $35 to $37 regularly on the, on the website. From there, this one, the Rocketbook Mini, they actually, the company actually got this idea from some suggestions that, that their customers were coming up with. So uh, customers wanted to have a notebook that they could pretty much carry around with them that wasn't the size of a regular notebook. So they created a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much mini notebook, um, just the size of your pocket. Uh, and it has the same exact idea. The only difference here, if you notice at the very bottom, there aren't any actual icons. So the only thing that's there is a QR code. So the difference here, when you fill out whatever you wanna fill out on the mini, <clears throat> the only thing you need, you need to do to send it through is actually through the application. So the process for each of the notebooks is exactly the same. The only difference for this one um, is that rather than pretty much checking it off on the notebook itself, you are selecting it on the app. This one goes for $16. Okay, so moving from here, we have the Rocketbook Core. This is actually the most recent notebook that they have created. Um, and they actually altered the Everlast to this one, which is why they don't have the Everlast on their website anymore. So this one comes with the two options. You have the dotted lines, you have the exact same setup, uh, and you also have uh, straight lines for writing as well. This one goes for $34. There's not much of a change with this notebook. Um, it is like the previous one, simply without all of the templates. Uh, now, the last two things that I have on this slide, they are pretty much in the creation stage of them. They haven't actually completely created them yet. Uh, so they're, one of their next ideas, we have the Rocketbook Notepad. So if you think of a regular legal pad that you want to write on, that is the concept that they're trying to come up with here. Um, so it's not currently on their website. However, they are trying to make it magnetic. Um, and more so like a legal pad. The other most recent thing that I've seen, and I actually just saw this yesterday, they are calling it the ThinkBoard X. And I think overall, this would probably be a great idea in the physical classroom. Um, if you take a look at the picture, it is um, a stickable kind of whiteboard. So if you're thinking of any of the rooms that you have uh, where you work or, or um, how you're doing at home currently. Um, this restickable whiteboard can pretty much be put, you know, they say anywhere or anywhere on a wall, or if you, um, they also have smaller ones, you can also put on student desks and you can use that as well. Uh, so it's kind of like a much less expensive whiteboard um, for the classroom. So I think the idea is pretty good. I think they're, they're trying to get the funding for it now. Um, and that is the, the ThinkBoard X. So that is the newest thing that I have seen so far. Uh, the beacons themselves. So this is kind of where they stray away from the idea of the notebook. Um, so the beacons, they look like this. Uh, there, are, there are four of them and they are restickable and reusable. So you can actually clean these with warm water uh, and you can move them all around. Uh, the idea here, uh, is to take these beacons, they come in a pack of four. So if you think of a regular whiteboard, you can actually stick them on the corners uh, of a whiteboard. Uh, and they end up looking something like this. So let's say that's your whiteboard uh, at work, at home, at school. Uh, or if you have a larger whiteboard, if you have eight of them, you can actually kind of create a super whiteboard uh, by, by combining them. So the idea here with the, with the beacons is the, the concept of actually di digitizing your notes. So let's say uh, for the sake of a few examples here, um, 
if at the end of the day you want to digitize your notes to send them to the class or throughout the day, uh, you do the exact same thing through the Rocketbook app. Uh, and it simply snaps what you have directly to the area that you want it to. Now you may be thinking, how is that actually different from me just simply taking a picture of the whiteboard? If you think of the actual app itself, you have several different options of where you want to send something. So you can previously pretty much set a specific drive folder, a specific email, um, depending where you want it to go, and you can consistently save those notes in the same area. Rather, what I know that I, has happened to me personally in the past, um, and you know, I take all these pictures and they somehow always get lost in my gallery, and that always tends to happen. So that's one idea of the beacons. Uh, another idea is the concept of snapcasting. Now, before I get to that, um, this is my creation of a whiteboard because I don't have a whiteboard. So I created this a few days ago. All this is, is a piece of printer paper, a piece of plastic right over it and the Rocketbook beacons. So the setup of the beacons is exactly like this. You just put them in the corners. <clears throat> and as you're writing, the app simply takes snaps of what you're writing on there to send it into the cloud. So in terms of these snap casts, this concept is a little bit different from simply just sending notes. <clears throat> and the idea here, uh, if you set up your device uh, and you set it to snap cast, it actually takes snaps or it takes pictures of what you're doing on that either notebook or on that whiteboard every five seconds. So you can actually also do this on the notebooks. They, um, they also came up with the snap cast idea on the notebooks themselves. Uh, but as an idea here, just to give you a little bit of a visual, the right side shows the, the snap cast. Uh, so let's say, for example, if we were to do a snap cast, if I was writing on a rocket book currently, uh, you on the right side would actually be looking at it online. The left side is what I would be writing. So as I would be moving forward, the snap cast actually updates itself every five seconds. So there's one visual let's say a mathematical visual, if I was going through a problem step by step, um, you notice on the left side, it says position page. So it kind of crops the page itself and this works with the beacons and you can work through, let's say a step by step problem and students can watch through this step by step as you're going through it. So something like this, I think could be possible with, let's say for example, virtual office hours, uh, if you were tutoring somebody, um, the only negatives I personally see here is that you can't really attach any audio to it. I know it's something that they're looking into doing, uh, but they haven't done yet. Um, and that kind of idea. So I think it's a good step forward. Um, and it, it provides for some other options as well. So looking back into the actual classroom, if you don't have, let's say a doc camera, or some way to present your information onto the actual front board, you could possibly use it as your own document camera uh, by snapping what you have onto the front screen. Or you can also have students snap their, act, their own work. So you have an example of a student with a little whiteboard here. Uh, you can have group work all snapped to the front, uh, or you can have them actually snap those assignments to you. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, but the other thing, under letter D, option for transcription. So a lot of the time when these notes are actually snapped to a specific location, let's say a specific drive folder, you're also provided with a transcription for them. So if, let's say, you're writing something, um, it will give you a text, text transcription for those notes, which is, I think is pretty good for those accommodations. They're not always perfect, but I think it's a good idea. Uh, the options here for the beacons, uh, they do come in a pack of four, so regularly they're $15, but if you opt for a pack of three of them, they come for 40. So those are some options there. Okay, so overall, in terms of what I have found, those were pretty much all of the priced options that they have or they're currently thinking of. They do also have educator options. So their website, and I'll present it to you guys at the end, uh, also has an educator option, which is which it's free to sign up. 
Um, and they do have a bunch of different wholesale options. So some of the, some of the different options that we have here, uh, we have the pens that are used, uh, a pen station, just as another example. A lot of their items they actually also have on Amazon as well. Uh, something that I have found, however, because I tried ordering on Amazon, the things on Amazon are actually a little more expensive. So their website comes out with, um, with a little cheaper options. So some other options that we have here, the various notebooks that we just went through, uh, to give you a little bit of an example, the mini on their website by itself is $16. As an educator option, it's 12. So what I've seen is that all of the notebooks are cheaper uh, with the free educator option. So I would definitely go for that. And then a wholesale option, uh, depending on if, you're, if your district, if your uh, workplace is into the idea of Rocketbook, they have a variety of them. Um, you know, I think it depends on whatever, whatever they're going for, but they do have a variety of options on their website. Um, and if you look, for example, the teacher test pack, they come with one pack, would come with two pens, a cloth, beacons, a pen holder, and a notebook themselves. So I think it simply depends on what kind of um, is the desire. So in terms of what else you can actually do with it, in terms of scanning, so I know some schools have some issues with uh, actually having cell phones in the classroom, or if you think of uh, students that don't have those cell phones in the classroom. <clears throat> Other devices can also be used to do the scanning, uh, and different setups can also be used. So as an example here, you have an iPad uh, kind of being held at the top, can be scanned. Uh, a cheaper option uh, here, uh, a similar idea, you can also use those little crates from, I know they have them in Walmart, which is a lot cheaper. Um, and I know I've read to see what other types of devices can do scanning. I know uh, people have looked into Chromebook scanning. I'm not sure um, if it's completely possible, uh, but I would definitely uh, kind of take a look at that. So I think some type of setup like this might also be a lot simpler for students to send through their assignments even uh, within the class period. Um, now, taking a look at that, regardless of if the students are in the classroom, uh, or if we're going through remote learning now, uh, assignments can be created through Google Classroom and the students can actually send them through their own notebooks uh, or through their own sheets. And we'll take a look at the sheets in a second. So to give you an, an idea of how that actually works, <clears throat> throughout the app itself, uh, the icons that we talked about earlier, you're not actually, there's not actually an option for Google Classroom to be set as an icon. Uh, there's kind of like an extra step that you need to go through. So if you take a look at, uh, let's say, uh, we have our second picture here. Once we've gone through our more actions, our little three um, dots at the top, we only need to share through Google Classroom. Uh, and that is how we're creating an assignment uh, through there and we're sharing it through there. So students, when they have finished an assignment within the notebook, they simply need to attach it through Google Classroom and turn it in as if they were doing it on the regular Google Classroom themselves. So if you think about kind of what we're going through now, um, some of these students are, let's say, for example, writing their science or their math notes on what would be a type of regular notebook, sending it straight to you, and it makes it a lot easier for you to actually take a look at it, collect it, and grade it itself. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, once an instructor or a teacher actually receives that assignment, um, an instructor can actually view it and also annotate it. So for example, uh, if you get a type of math assignment, you'll notice the, the different type of editing tools at the bottom. Uh, you can take a look at what the student has sent you and you can actually annotate, uh, annotate uh, give them any type of feedback through that. Once the, the document is saved, they receive an email saying um, that their, uh, their assignment has been reviewed uh, and then they can take a look at it. So I think that's a pretty good option um, for assignments. So last but not least, I think this is the best part. These are the options. So 
Um, regardless of whatever notebooks, whatever products we've gone through, Rocketbook has also come up with their own free options. So the various different types of pages that we've gone through, they've actually simply made them free PDF pages. So the website that's up here, uh, that is the one that has all of the pages on it. Um, and they also have all of the pages in PDF form. So just to give you some examples of different some of the different uh, papers that they have. You can have uh, a grid format for let's say more math work for anything graphing wise. Something that is also not present in the actual notebook, something like this can be used for music. So something on, um, in terms of a different subject. So these are actually all of the, the sheets that they have. Uh, they actually put together a goal agreement, which wasn't present in any of the notebooks. Uh, and then they have a variety, you can take a look at some of them. We have a, a, a dot grid, so those were just simply the dots that were present in a lot of them. Simple lined paper, graph paper for math or science, music paper, and then a variety, um, you know, depends on kind of what, uh, what the desire is of, of the instructor. So all of these can actually be found free on their website. They can easily be downloaded and they can easily be sent to students, to coworkers, um, and they're very easily printable. Um, so taking a look at that, something that I have also found uh, at the very bottom here is the idea of lamination, which some people are trying to try out with these. So um, if you think back to how I kind of put together my own uh, whiteboard previously, the idea of lamination, uh, if you can laminate, that's a possibility as well. If not, if you can see my screen, which I believe you can, one of these little plastic guys can also simply be put right in front of a piece of paper. So something that I've seen as well, instead of using the various free pages that they have, if you have, um, if you have the beacons, you can also use one of your class worksheets and just put it behind one of these guys. And so I think that you know, it, it doesn't work as well as, uh, as a regular sheet would or as uh, a regular whiteboard would, but I, think, I still think it's doable. Uh, and I think it's cheaper, so I think that's a good, uh, a good option. So overall, that is all I have. Um, I would like to hear if any of you have any thoughts of how you could possibly use anything Rocketbook. Or anything, whether it's personal, class, work, or fun. Well, I know that in, at the coordinators' meetings in my high school, the math teachers are always wondering uh, how the work could be submitted through Google Classroom uh, in a way that's actually like practical. So I was thinking that this could be used for that, like if students all have rocket books. And then they take a picture of it, of the QR code. You said there was an extra step, though, to upload it to Google Classroom, right? I, I missed that bit. What's the extra step? Sure, I can go back. So for the other ones, it's usually um, a way to kind of send it through uh, through the icons. But for this, is it this one? It's this one. So if you take a look at the first little icon here, um, they take their picture. The second one, uh, the little green circle at the top right, if they click that, that little menu, uh, three dots, comes up with the share button at the bottom, uh, and then they share it through Google Classroom. So from there, they would simply attach it as an assignment. So I know it's kind of like a, a little extra step. I know that I have had issues um, in the past with students where if they take a picture of a file and they try to insert it as a file, they never know how to save the file. They never know how to send it in. Um, so I think it's an option. Um, right, and how does the, uh, the editing stuff work? Because you said you could mark it up uh, afterwards. So how does that work exactly? Yeah, good question. Um, so once the teacher actually opens up the assignment, um, now the only thing here, what I've read, uh, is that the majority of what I've read is that the marking goes through um, the Google Classroom mobile app. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure how it would go through a PC, um, but the teacher simply opens up Google Classroom normally. They would open up the assignments normally, uh, and then they would simply just go assignment by assignment, and then they edit it. Uh, so there's that little pen at the top. They would click that pen, and then they have the little annotation buttons at the bottom. 
and then they would be able to write on the assignment. Again, the edit, the edit feature, it seems like that's something that works exclusively with Rocketbook. Am I correct in assuming that? I think so. I haven't really yeah. seen much of it in the past. But I, I, you know, I use Google Classroom all the time and I've never, like, like if a student takes a picture of something and sends it through there, all I'll have is the picture. I won't be able to edit. So it seems like it syncs with Rocketbook, so you're able to edit on the document, and that that could be something that's useful for math teachers because they say they 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 um can't really seem to get around uh the fact that the students have to have to um, document all their work on paper and work through the problems on paper. So this will be a way for them to work through the work, the problems on paper and also upload it to Google Classroom and have an entire editing process through Google Classroom on the digital platform. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Right. I think the feedback is a, is a very good thing that they've come up with. Yeah. And for the, the, the microwavable uh, one, actually, I thought that was pretty interesting. So it's like, if I'm understanding correctly, if you want to erase it, you just put it in the microwave and turn it on and then it erases. Yeah. And the other thing is, which I didn't mention, but now that, that you're set, talking about the microwave, um, there has also been questions if, let's say, for example, I, uh, I, I take my notebook, I leave it in a bag, and I leave it in the car, and it's a hot summer day. Mm -hmm. So the way that that notebook uh, actually works is because of that heat, it erases. So if I leave that notebook in the car on a hot summer day, it's going to erase. Okay. Questions that people have actually had, well, what do I do? So they have actually said that in order to get those notes back, you put it in the freezer and the notes come back. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I think it's crazy, but I think it's pretty cool. But the microwave deletes it permanently? Um, it, it deletes it. You know, I think there are, you can still kind of see the imprints of the right. microwave, but it's, um, it's, it's clear. It's clean. Okay. Um, and any specified amount of time, and I'm assuming that the, the book could be closed and then you can microwave it then and then it erases. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, one cool. I've read at least, yeah. All right, awesome. The friction pens work, the um, ink, um, when you heat it up, which I've got a marker here, it's like a little rubber nib instead of an eraser here. So when you rub it against the paper, the friction heats up and it changes the, um, the pigment from a color to um, a clear. So there's like two molecules together that make, or pigments that make the color. And when you heat it, they separate and it's clear. I wasn't aware that they actually would go back if you got cold. Um, I know people were talking about, you know, leaving pens in the car or the notebooks in the car and all of a sudden the pens don't work. You know, they bought, you know, a set of pens for $30 and they got hot and now they're worthless. Also don't put post-it notes on your crock pot with, when you write with these because the second you turn it on, it goes white or clear. And your mom doesn't know what, when to turn it off. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I never really thought about the uh, the pens, but you're right. Yeah, if you see, you know, it's a little hard to tell. There's a little kind of thing at the end, which they say you can also kind of erase what you have if it's a little mistake. But yeah. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? I have to tell you that as you were doing it, my son is in college right now and he's in a Chinese class. And so he has to write out his Chinese characters for his class. Let me get out of this son. And then he's got to scan it so that he could send it to his professor because she wants it as a PDF. So that's how he's got to do it. Something like this would be a lot easier for him. He wouldn't have to go through that extra step. And I'm kind of thinking that's the same thing for music or, you know, there's a lot of different math, particularly when you need to be able to write something and send it as opposed to typing it, this is a really good way to do it. And quite honestly, for someone, I like to take handwritten notes. I don't like to type notes. I find that I do a lot more. I'm much more creative when I, when I handwrite my notes. So something like this would allow me to then send it to my, my files where I need it because I work completely online. So it's kind of the, the nice little bridge between the two. Which is good, which was their goal. Yeah. Anybody else? I mean, this has a lot of applications as well for science. Um, biology, diagramming, different body parts or organs. I mean, the applications are many. I could also see chemistry, which is something that we were trying to figure out how to do chemistry online. 
for our online support or supplemental instruction program. And something like this could be very helpful with students to share um, their equations and share it with their instructors in real time. Yeah, that's a good point. I think overall, um, a lot of the a lot of the things that Rocketbook has come up with, I think it's really great for the subjects that tend to need more kind of visual notes and handwriting. Uh, just as you said, a lot of science, a lot of math, um, you know, those that can't really get by with just writing text or, you know, typing text. I think that's uh, one of the issues. Uh, instructors are kind of dealing with and I think this is a good bridge to kind of hit those subjects which hasn't really uh, been present. Well, I agree especially when you have some of the whiteboard technology not being really as I would say as flexible as it could be when you're using it in mass with a large number of students something like Rocketbook or these little Rocketbook um, snap Chats, snap, not snap. Snapcasts. Thank you. Snapcasts <laughs> could be a great alternative for students then to share their work with their instructors or their colleagues online. Awesome. Yeah, I like that it's inexpensive and reusable. Great. We all like cheap and free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who does it? <laughs> Are there any other questions? There was one question posted in the chat. Um, are there any limitations when it comes to creating the Snapcast? Does it sit as an image file or a PDF? That's a good question. Um, overall limitations, um, when I tried it myself, the one of the things is that you can't really add audio to it. Uh, so it's, it's not as good as if you were doing, let's say a screencast as a video with a document camera. Um, but overall, if somebody is watching it, it does show kind of step by step uh, to it. Uh, so I think they are slowly working on that. I don't think they're going to get to it anytime soon, um, but it's an option for them. And then what was, what was the other question? How does it save the um, image when it uploads? Is it a, an image or a PDF question. or what I does I like the instructor it saves as a PDF. I believe, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I think the majority of them, if you have writing on them as well, uh, you can get the option of a transcription um, regularly typed through as it is sent through. I believe it is a PDF, but I'm not completely positive. If you use a normal pen on it, does it ruin it? If you use a normal pen? Uh, I don't know, I don't think a normal pen would be erased. So I think they, the concept with the, their pens is that it's kind of, uh, they're, they're gel wise and they can, uh, you can kind of clear them off afterwards. Okay. I would say that for me, that might be a limitation that students would use the wrong pen and make it obsolete, you know? Yeah, I could definitely see that. The one thing I don't like about the gel pens, the friction pens is that they tend to smudge a little bit mm -hmm. on the, on the one that I have. So when you're writing and you close and you open up again, you have a smudge page. Mm. Um, but if you let it dry, you know, it's not an issue. Makes sense. Justine, are you still with us? Might have an internet issue, I think. <laughs> One thing I also like about the, the pens is that um, my nephew doesn't like um, to write necessarily because he doesn't like to make making the mistakes. He gets all upset. So with the erasable markers and pens, he can actually do something instead of just walking away, he can actually erase it and um, we start. Yeah, quite honestly, I think the newer, the younger generations don't really like to work with regular pens. I've found that for the most part, they, they use pencils more often because they can erase. And so, yeah, having the erasable pen is definitely a plus. I think it's an advantage for students. I think, mm -hmm. you know, and why not? Why wouldn't you want to be able to erase what you're working with, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hi, Justine. <laughs> so um, 
I'm going to unmute you there. So I just want to say that this was amazing. We really learned a lot about it. I think it's a great resource. And um, this has been um, interesting. I think it's something I'd love to try. I, I don't know anyone else in the group that hasn't tried it. Doug, you've, you've got one there. Ram, you're going to probably try. <laughs> yeah, something to worth to look into. Not too expensive, too. Really great. So thanks so much for your presentation. Thanks to everybody for coming. Um, we have another presentation on Thursday. Dr. Schamberg is going to be talking about some software. And then we, I think there's two on Thursday. So check our uh, Facebook site. You'll be able to sign up. You have to register to get the Zoom link. Thanks, Justine, so much. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Justine. Uh, have a good one, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.